I'm sure anyone watching this video will be already familiar with the terms voltage and current, but if someone were to ask you how to explain how these two are different, could you answer them? Or how about how they work together? And how does resistance affect them? Well, by the end of the video, you'll be able to answer all of these questions. Let's begin with current. Perhaps you've heard of the Coulomb. If not, it's easier to think of the Coulomb as a measurement, just like a cake recipe. Mmm, cake. Mm. Sorry. Might ask for one cup of flour, for example. Think of the Coulomb as a measuring cup for electricity. So let's give our Coulomb a physical representation, and let's make this quad bike represent one Coulomb. Now on its own, our Coulomb isn't of much use for us, but with the help of its best friend voltage, it becomes something truly amazing. So let's break down voltage. It's easy to think of voltage like a pressure or a force that can move something. All the taps in your home have water flow through them because there is pressure forcing the water through the pipe and out of the tap. If we were to remove the pressure from the water pipe, no water would flow out of the tap when you turn it on. So think of voltage as pressure or a force that can move something. So let's give voltage a physical representation also. This human can represent voltage and we'll call him Voltman. And trust me, he has zero potential. Zero potential? Puh, I'm out of here. At the moment he is zero volts, he is lazy, and he isn't going to move our coulomb for us. But let's see what happens when we give him some energy. Now he has a 5 volt potential, he can move our coulomb for us. Now that we have our coulomb moving, we'll rename it to 1 ampere, which is often abbreviated just to 1 amp. Let's ask my sensibly dressed assistant over here how one ampere is defined. Let's see, Coulomb definition. Ah, oh, yes, here we go. The definition of a Coulomb. One Coulomb is the quantity of electricity carried in one second by a current of one ampere. Right, thanks for that. Let's bring in our third and final contender, resistance. Resistance is measured in ohms if we're talking about electrical circuits. However, in the physical world, let's use the brakes on the quad bike to represent resistance. Now at the moment, we have 5 volts trying to push our 1 amp of current, and he can do that until we add some resistance by putting the brakes on. Now the quad bike isn't going anywhere fast because the resistance is too high and preventing the voltage from moving our 1 amp of current. The only way we can get our amp of current moving again is to either lower the resistance or raise the voltage. So let's give Voltman some more energy and raise the voltage from 5 volts to 100 volts. Now the resistance is overcome because we've increased the voltage and once again our amp of current is on the move. Now let's take a moment to address a pet peeve of mine. Like me, you've probably been told at some point in your life that it's not the voltage that'll kill you, it's the current. And that is completely flawed reasoning and let me explain why. Take for example a typical 12 volt car battery like I have here. Now during the startup phase of the motor, the motor can draw hundreds of amps of current from the battery. Now it only takes 0.15 amps across a human's chest to potentially cause cardiac arrest. So if I touch the terminals of this battery, isn't it going to kill me? Well, the things you have to do for science. I'm insured. Let's try this. Nothing. Why am I not dead? Since I wasn't killed when I touched the terminals of the car battery, it's quite obvious that there's more to this saga than just current. It's clearly not a solo assassin. So let's explain what's going on here. The reason I didn't die when I touched the terminals of the car battery is the resistance of my skin is too high to allow the puny 12 volts to push any current through my body. We could liken this to a bullet fired from a gun. The current would be represented by the bullet, and the voltage would be represented by how much gunpowder is pushing the bullet. 
So let's bring back Voltman and give him the same voltage as the car battery. This tin can can represent my skin's natural resistance. As you can see, with only 12 volts of potential, Voltman just can't put enough force behind the bullet to overcome the resistance of the tin can. However, what happens if we increase the voltage from 12 volts to 1000 volts? Now Voltman can easily throw the bullet with enough force to overcome the resistance of the tin can and punch a hole right through the tin can. Did you notice during this demonstration, the bullet, which remember represents current, never changed its value. We only changed the value of voltage. And that's why it's wrong to say that it's not the voltage that will kill you, it's the current. So this concludes my simplified explanation of voltage and current. And please do keep in mind that this is a simplified explanation. This information shouldn't be used to build the entire house of knowledge out of. It's merely just a small brick in a much larger building. If you want to learn more on this topic, I thoroughly recommend you check out Electroboom's video titled Definition of Voltage and Current, and I'll leave a link in the video's description for that if you do want to watch it. Also, let me know what you think of this type of video format. Is it something you want to see more of, or is it something that not really interests you? So this is a bit of a different video format for me, so let me know in the comments section what you thought about it. Is it something you'd like to see more of, or something that you weren't really interested in? So thank you very much for watching. If you liked the video or found it useful, please give it a like. It'll be appreciated. And also consider subscribing as well. Also, I've set up a Patreon page. So if you want to support the videos I make and the content on this channel, please consider being my Patreon. Other than that, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.